What is going on, investors? Hopefully you guys had a great day out there. Time to talk about AMC Entertainment, popular movie theater chain, but probably more better known in the stock market as kind of being grouped up with kind of the meme stops of GameStop and Nokia and some of these other ones out there that have just had parabolic rises and then subsequent fall-offs. But year-to-date, the stock's still up 395%. We got a $4.6 billion market cap on this one. Still a little bit of short interest. When we get over to the stock chart, we'll talk about some of the things that we're seeing here. We'll talk about some of this price action here as well. When we went from about, you know, three, four or five dollars a share all the way up to 20 on huge volume, just massive volume. And now here we are sitting around ten dollars per share. We'll talk about some of the dynamics that this plays into the stock. But on today's show, we're also going to focus on the earnings because believe it or not, AMC reported their Q4 revenues and they did beat expectations despite 89% drop in revenue. And I think you can probably imagine why they had such a gigantic revenue drop. So we're going to jump over to the numbers, take a look at them really under this scenario. Okay. This is kind of like a cruise line, an airline, that type of thing. You're expecting just massive drop offs in revenue. Look, you went from 877 down to 80 in a quarter. Whoa. That's that's just a big drop. Take a look for the full year. You went from 3.3 billion down to 712 million. I saw in the press release they have 78% of their theaters open. I doubt they're all full capacity. I doubt we're going to get back to that point anytime in the near future, but you can imagine probably with the next uh, 12 to 24 months they probably will whether or not that brings back all this revenue, we'll see. But when you have just a gigantic drop off in this revenue, and it's obviously well attributed to a pandemic, what you want to take a look is cash burn. And so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the liquidity that AMC has, see how much cash they're burning through, how much cash they have left on the balance sheet, and also what that could potentially mean for the stock price. Now, so we've got our revenues here. Like I talked about here, this is the quarter ended 19 over 20. We've got the year ended 19 over 20 here. Obviously just a disaster on the top line. Food and beverage just absolutely got obliterated. I think the other thing you can do is in this scenario is take a look at 2019 and say, hey, this is a more normalized environment. Will AMC, can AMC get back to this 2019 level and how quickly can they get back to that? I think that's what you need to be judging as an investor is will people go back to the movies like they did in 2019 and how quickly do you think that will happen so those are the questions i would ask because look total revenues 1.4 billion in a quarter 5.4 billion in a more normalized year you see in a you know pretty bad year they still cleared 1.2 billion again this is a four billion dollar company so that's actually pretty solid revenues in my opinion in a disaster type scenario, if you can get back to 2019, you're getting back to, you know, very close to one time sales, a little over one time sales. Now we take a look, we got other operating costs down here and film costs, food and beverage costs, all this other stuff that is costing them money. And you can kind of analyze the company from this perspective as well. We've got our total operating expenses down here at a 1.13 billion. Now, unfortunately they just could not cut costs. Now I'm going to show you here in a second. Some of this stuff doesn't necessarily need to belong on here like depreciation here and they also have this impairment of these assets and so they have these bit this is about 500 almost 600 million dollars that not necessarily cash it's really just balance sheet kind of uh, things that they had to do you see in a more normalized quarter they did 1.4 billion in revenue but they also had about 1.4 billion in costs a pretty low margin business as you can imagine so they cleared 43 million million to the bottom line in a quarter for a full year in 2019 they did 136 the reason why again i'm focusing on the previous year a lot is you're i'm assuming if you're buying amc you're assuming that they get back to some kind of normalcy now in this year it's just a complete disaster they lost four billion dollars and they, they lost about almost a billion dollars in this quarter but when we take a look from the cash flows perspective that's kind of what i want to do so we pull down this net loss number right here so we take this net loss number this is like a gap generally accepted accounting principle number we pull this down pull it into cash flow so we put it up here now the great thing about cash flows is some things are not cash, like depreciation. That's just a balance sheet thing. Impairment on these assets. Again, just a balance sheet thing. Some things do get back, like added back in and we get down to a, they call it here adjusted EBITDA, but it's really like cash flows. 
negative $324 million. So it gets you a better sense when you want to know like how much cash is AMC burning per quarter and per year. That's a very important question, especially when you are not running at full capacity and likely not for a another considerable period of time. You want to know how much cash they're burning. They blew through about $325 million in a quarter and about $995 million in a year. So it looks like it accelerated slightly in the most recent quarter. Now, coming over to their balance sheet, it is somewhat unfortunate to report that they have only, and I say only, about $308 million in cash and cash equivalents when they just burned through more than that in a quarter. They had to leverage up their balance sheet quite a bit. They borrowed, it looks like, over a billion dollars, and it looks like they burned through most of it keeping the lights on, so to speak, uh, corporate borrowings up to 5.7 billion. They've got some other long-term liabilities and they also have these leases. So from a balance sheet perspective, things are looking really bleak. I think AMC is going to have to continue to raise more money. So that takes us over to the stock chart because one way they might be able to raise money is by selling the shares of the stock. And if they can get this thing pumped up, they can raise more money and keep the business going. Otherwise, they're going to have to uh, you know, evaluate some other options. We've seen some rumors on the stock. When you scroll through the news on this one, Amazon has been rumored to potentially want to take this over. I'm sure there's probably some other suitors, even some private equity that wouldn't mind to take this one private because at a $4 billion valuation and if it gets further distressed for whatever reason, could be a decent pickup in my opinion if things do get back to normal. Now, from a pure chart, forget that this company is, is very much struggling financially. They're probably going to have to raise money. Take a look at the stock chart. So we have this gigantic move. This was like in the GameStop. This was Wall Street bets. This is Twitter. This is everything. People are, you know, everybody's talking about AMC and GameStop right here. And the stock goes from about 5 to $6 per share all the way up to 20 and then crashes all the way back down to about $5 per share. Now, the situation that this creates is because we have these big, gigantic volume bars. I mean, these bars have not been, they have been repeated a little bit here, but this is a ton of volume. And this, these are people, these are people that are buying this, thinking it's going to go to the moon, rocking emojis, those type of things. It's going to go to a hundred dollars a share, $200, $300 a share. And look who would blame them when you look at something like GameStop, which is basically kind of following through on that people are assuming maybe AMC does the same thing, but now this money is trapped. And as this stock starts walking back up and starts touching these candles, some of these people, a vast majority of them could come in and sell this stock. Also, the further this stock goes up, short sellers could make a stronger argument to sell this one short. Now, we are in a shorter term uptrend, though. As I see here, we are in an uptrend. And this stock has basically been locked up in this uptrend for a few weeks now. And But we're in a tight range here. There's a little bit of support for the stock around $8 per share, lower than that, about $5.50. But there is kind of a cap on the stock. It, you see it topped out here at 10 or we'll call that $11. And it also, it kind of wicked through this all the way up to 12 but came down pretty hard and stopped right around that $11 mark. But... There's a little bit of short support here on this uptrend line, right at $9. So a couple ways you can play this. If you're if you bought this stock back here, I would call your money kind of trapped. And I would take this as a learning experience. First of all, do not turn a trade, which most people on the Wall Street Bets forum was doing. They had a specific strategy. They were targeting highly shorted stocks like AMC, like COS, like uh, GameStop. They were targeting highly shorted stocks to create a short squeeze. That is a trading opportunity. A lot of people were doing it through options or maybe even the regular shells. Doesn't really matter. They had a trade setup. Okay. If you bought this up here and you money got trapped, first of all, you need to set a stop loss in a trade. And you also do not want to turn trades into long positions. Now, some of you may have done that and that's okay. Everybody has done it, myself included. So, you just got to make sure you don't try to repeat those mistakes again, because you, if you bought up in here, you're down 40, 50, maybe even 60% on a stock like this. So from the shorter term perspective, though, again, you've got limits on this stock at around 11. You've got support on this tre upward trend line right around $9, $10 a share. You've got support underneath here at $8. You got a, a lot more support down here at five, about five, 550. If I was in this one, 
from a fundamental perspective, this looks really, really bad. Okay. From a cash flow burning perspective, they're burning through more cash in a quarter than they have sitting on the balance sheet. That is also very, very bad. So from a fundamental perspective, stock makes no sense. From a trade perspective, probably could make some sense. You just want to have stop losses in place, be able to exit this trade just in case it goes against you because it could hit its head on 11 here and come all the way down to eight, blow through eight, you're down to five. Now it could blow through 11 and we could be back up here in 14, 15, 16, $17 land. And even from a fundamental perspective on the valuation side, not completely out of whack, honestly. Kind of sets up similar to GameStop. If you analyze GameStop from a fundamental perspective, valuation doesn't look completely out of whack. Now that was a couple weeks ago when the stock was trading a lot lower. Now I'm not exactly sure, but this one still hasn't gotten completely out of whack from a market cap perspective, but from a cash burn perspective, I would actually expect this company to need to raise more money or bring on some kind of partner or something to kind of save itself because I don't necessarily think it's going to be able to turn things around fast enough in order to reverse that cash burn, which still looks like it is hindering the company. So that was AMC. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. We'll be back again with more later this week. Good luck with your investments.